In the heart of medieval Europe, long before synthetic fertilizers and agricultural science, farmers faced a recurring crisis. Land that once yielded golden wheat and lush barley would, after years of planting, begin to fade. Stalks grew thin, leaves yellowed, and harvests shrank. In a time when survival depended entirely on the earth's bounty, this was no small matter. But there was a cure, one so simple it came from the hearths of their own homes and the bonfires that lit village nights. Farmers discovered that the grey dust left after burning wood could coax life back into the soil. This was ash dressing, a practice that blended necessity, observation, and centuries of trial into a tradition powerful enough to rescue dead earth. Today, even in our modern gardens, this old-world technique still works. Medieval farmers were nothing if not resourceful. They lived in a world where nothing was wasted. Every winter, fires burned steadily in open hearths, and in the fields, brush and unwanted wood were often piled and burned to clear space for planting. Over time, villagers began noticing something remarkable. Wherever the ash from these fires fell, plants seemed to grow taller, greener, and with more vigour. What at first seemed like a coincidence became a deliberate act, collecting wood ash and spreading it over tired fields as part of seasonal soil care. This practice had its roots in even earlier farming traditions. Ancient Romans, for example, wrote of using ash in vineyards to sweeten the soil and encourage better grapes. Norse settlers carried the habit to the windswept farmlands of Scandinavia. By the Middle Ages, ash dressing was widely recognised across Europe, from the crofts of Scotland to the orchards of France. Wood ash is more than the dusty remains of burned logs. It is a concentrated storehouse of minerals drawn up by the tree during its lifetime. Potassium, calcium, magnesium and trace elements like boron and manganese all survive the fire and remain in the ash. These are exactly the nutrients soils tend to lose after years of continuous cropping without replenishment. In the acidic, rain-leached soils of medieval northern Europe, another property of ash made it invaluable. It could raise pH. Much like lime, ash is alkaline. When spread over sour soil, it neutralized excess acidity, creating conditions in which a wider range of crops could thrive. But the benefits went deeper still. Balanced pH helped soil microbes, tiny unseen workers essential to nutrient cycling, recover their populations. This microbial resurgence often meant fields regained not just chemical fertility but biological life. Medieval ash dressing was far from random. Villagers often collected hearth ash over the winter, storing it in bins or barrels to keep it dry. Come early spring or after autumn harvest, they would carry it to the fields in sacks or baskets. The ash was broadcast by hand, flung in wide arcs across the surface. In some regions, farmers lightly raked or harrowed it in, ensuring it mixed with the topsoil before rain could wash it away. Application rates were learned through experience rather than measurement. Too little, and the soil saw little change. Too much, and the land could become overly alkaline, especially in naturally neutral soils. On light, sandy ground, ash often worked wonders, while on heavier clays, its effects were more gradual. In orchard lands, a ring of ash was sometimes placed around the drip line of fruit trees to feed both the soil and the tree's root zone. Fire was more than just a byproduct here, it was part of the renewal. When brush and crop residues were burned in the open, not only was ash produced, but pests and weed seeds in the debris were destroyed. This cleared the way for the next planting. In some cases, controlled burns were used directly on patches of exhausted soil, leaving a fresh blanket of ash right where it was needed. While we now understand the environmental limits of such burning, in medieval times, it was an effective way to recycle organic matter and minerals back into the earth. Today, the principles of ash dressing are as relevant as ever, though they are best adapted to a careful, scaled-down approach. In a home garden, wood ash from a fireplace or wood stove can be a free and potent soil amendment. However, 
It must be used with knowledge and restraint. Gardeners can sprinkle small amounts, about a handful per square meter, over vegetable beds in winter or early spring. Mixing the ash into the soil ensures that its nutrients are evenly distributed and that its alkalinity is moderated. On lawns, a light dusting can green the grass and encourage clover, just as it did centuries ago. Ash can also be particularly helpful for crops that appreciate potassium, such as tomatoes, beans and root vegetables. One must also be aware of what ash is not suitable for. Acid-loving plants like blueberries, rhododendrons and potatoes often suffer if the soil around them becomes too alkaline. Likewise, ash from treated or painted wood should never be used, as it can contain harmful residues. Modern soil science gives us a deeper understanding of why ash dressing restored productivity so effectively. The minerals it contains feed not just plants directly, but also the diverse microbial communities that make soil a living system. Bacteria, fungi and earthworms all respond positively when soil acidity is balanced and minerals are available in the right proportions. In medieval times, this connection was understood only through observation richer smelling earth, looser texture and the sudden return of worms were all signs the land had healed. Ash dressing was not just a technical solution, it became part of agricultural folklore. Proverbs about the value of ash can be found in multiple European languages. In England, one saying ran, Ashes in February worth a load of dung. Such wisdom reflected centuries of trial and success. Even when chemical fertilizers emerged in the 19th century, many small farmers kept a place for ash in their yearly routines, blending old and new knowledge. What stands out most about medieval ash dressing is its elegance. Farmers took a waste product, something that would otherwise be swept aside, and turned it into a powerful tool for renewal. It is a reminder that soil care need not always rely on costly inputs, and that sometimes the solutions to modern problems lie in the practices of the past. For those of us who study history, this is more than an agricultural footnote. It is an example of how human ingenuity, close observation of nature and patience can restore what seemed lost. Today, whether you tend a full farm or a few raised beds, the principles of ash dressing remain accessible. By respecting the balance of your soil, working with natural materials, and understanding the science behind them, you can breathe new life into tired ground, just as medieval farmers once did. The tools are simple, the cost is nothing, and the rewards, as history shows, can be immense. If stories like this spark your curiosity and make you want to dig deeper into the forgotten skills that sustain past generations, now is the perfect time to stay connected. Subscribe to In the Beginning for more deep dives into the ingenious, surprising and sometimes mysterious ways our ancestors shaped the world around them. Share this with friends who value both history and hands-on knowledge, and together we can keep these timeless lessons alive for the next generation.